My name is Darren Hall and I'm at the top of Buchanan Mountain, uh, which also has a old fire lookout right there. Uh, this is kind of what I had set up for the night. Um, I wasn't really anticipating there to be fires like right there. It's just about 3 p.m. and I left West Kelowna at probably 8 or 9. Oh, look at this. It's hard to see, but that's a really... I mean, this range is just fantastic. Which I'm assuming Purcells. All right, so a Buchanan lookout. Uh, welcome. All right, that is a retired forest fire lookout tower that was actively used uh, for forest fire spotting from around 1941 to 1982. People after people here. I was talking to one guy in a Tacoma who was kind of touring around and uh, I just met another couple who are on their honeymoon up here who are camping on the other side of the tower and uh, actually it was pretty pretty distracting. I wasn't able to shoot as much stuff as uh, I wanted to but that's okay. There were some good conversations there and that's uh, sometimes what it's all about but um, I've been having a pretty good time here. I've been doing a lot of time lapses and uh, just exploring uh, around the tower. It's really cool the way they have that set up in there and uh, Just kind of been waiting for it to get dark. This is the Briggs Creek fire that's currently on uh, That I can see from up here and it's this really cool situation where I'm up on a fire tower being able to see a true fire that's kind of burning across there I don't know it's something weird about that and uh, um in a way beautiful. There's just something mesmerizing about watching uh, a forest fire. I don't even know when but there was one when Okanagan Mountain Park was on fire and I found a nice little perch up on the connector to uh, to watch it there and it was just it's fascinating to me to to see it. I mean it was both the most beautiful thing I've ever seen and the most horrific thing um, and I think that's why I think those two things mixing together was was uh, it's I don't know. It's just so much power there. But yeah, I'm set up. I've got everything uh, pretty much ready to go for, for the night. I'm just super, super stoked to be out here. Like, I just don't even understand how a place like this uh, exists. And it's like, this is another West Kootenai kind of like exclusive. You know, I always used to do Idaho Peak. It was almost like a pilgrimage. About once a year, I'd go up through Sand Inn and you could drive up to Idaho Peak. I think it was about 16, 17 kilometers up a logging road. And then there was a two kilometer hike to the tower there. Um, but it was just beautiful, beautiful views overlooking like New Denver and the Slocan Valley. And it was, I just loved it out there. 
And uh, that road or that forest road has been washed out for, feels like going on four years now, which is a bummer. And I'm not even sure how much they're going to uh, put resources into fixing that. But I'm going to soak it in and I'm going to enjoy this place. I haven't really made a vlog or done anything like travel stuff in a long time and it's it's honestly a lot of work and I wanted to make sure that shooting stills was a priority on on this pro, uh, on this trip there's a few holes in my print store that I'm trying to fill this trip um, I've talked myself into thinking that this is more of a scouting trip for um, other times and somehow that was like psychologically going to be a uh, an excuse to be able to, you know, maybe not be on all the time, but I don't think I know another way. So it looks like just after 6 a.m. we should see the sun pop over in this way here, which will be pretty cool. I also think it'll be super interesting to see what the morning brings as far as like what the smoke does in the valley below. It's like, it could be like an inversion or it could look like if the if the smoke drops in the morning, it should be pretty interesting as well. I just hope it stays a little clear up here, or there won't be much to uh, uh, to shoot. But this fire is starting to um, you're you're starting to see the actual fire instead of smoke. So I'm interested. I'm interested to see how much burn is going on over there. So still here. Uh, the helicopters are still out. It's 8.30 and uh, it's getting pretty dark already. That's probably the end of my uh, prime time morning light. And uh, it was a whirlwind. I kind of set my alarm for 5.30. I was up at five. Like it was just a fantastic to be out here. And again, I'm just super amazed that this place uh, exists. And uh, I'm just really, really happy to be here. And I'm in no hurry to leave it. One of the thoughts was even just to stay another night here. Like I think there's so many nooks and crannies to uh, even explore up here. There's a little hiking trail. It's only a few kilometers. Um, but I've got like this wicked setup here. It kind of has everything I need. It's wide open to keep the solar going for um, keeping everything charged. And uh, 
Yeah, so that's the thought right now. You know, it can change. Uh, a lot of time lapses just from this. Um, I don't even know what you call this. A hand glide, paraglide ramp. And uh, it's pretty good. And it starts to decline right there, which is tough to see. But it literally goes. There's a little bit of bushes that might need to be trimmed up. But that's just a solid, solid drop. Full commit right there. I honestly love this place too because I have uh, internet connection or I have service and that's like, that's super, super important I think. Like one, I can keep track of what's going on with the fire here. It's just weather. It's kind of everything that, that super helps stay in touch at home, um, keep uh, the business going and uh it's pretty cool. I know a lot of people are like, oh, it'd be nice to just unplug and uh, why can't you just chill the hell out? And uh, this is me chilling out. Like this is definitely a happy, happy place. And um, I do still hope to get some hiking in over the next two days. But my only hard deadline on this trip is to be in trail on Friday where I'm going to stay with family and then Saturday morning me and my brother-in-law Nathan are going to do Old Glory um, in Roslyn, which is a, a pretty decent hike I hear. It's just like streaks. I gotta get my still camera and uh, I'll talk to you guys later. All right, you can't go inside uh, this lookout, but they have it set up. So cool. You can almost like picture like the guy getting up in the morning, putting on his tea, uh, maybe writing something in his diary that's sitting on the desk there. And uh, I think he's got a radio in, check, everything looks clear. And uh, just like come on out of your, your perch. Nice glass of tea in hand. And uh, just watch. Like, I almost think what better job for a photographer is, uh, would have been manning one of these uh, stations when they were in use. Like, you could, like, the st skills align to me. <laughs> you can kind of, like, not only shoot some great images, but just always be looking at what's changing. And it must have been just fantastic to see huge storms roll in here. <sighs> Crazy. It's like a fantasy, like hanging out here and just seeing. I don't know. I think it's like the same as like a lighthouse attendant or, or whatever. It's like, there's gotta be something quite, I think it's super interesting until you're probably doing it. And then you're like two months into your post and you're starting to eat your thumb or something. But other than that, it'd be pretty interesting to see, um, be in one spot with this kind of view and just see what nature does. I still think the plan might be to stay here, stay in the spot and create, like there's 360 degree views. There's a forest fire burning in sight across that way. There's this just incredible, valley I don't think I'm ready to leave so here is a look at uh, my hey, workstation in the uh, camper and it's perfect uh, I have everything I need uh, there's a couple of blue eddies powering everything up uh, outside Somewhere out there is uh, the solar panels. And uh, yeah, so camping, this is the view right there.
Good morning. Uh, this is day two. This morning, sunrise is looking great. Um, no smoke where that sun is going to rise. And uh, we're going to get a few shots to start the day and uh, start packing up and uh, moving on to uh, the next spot. the base of a Jumbo Pass hike and uh, I rolled up real late. The road getting here is definitely a real slow 30 kilometers but uh, it's 3 p.m. and at least we'll check this out. Out of the three hikes I was exploring out here this hike seemed to be the tamest, which is why I figured I'd give this one a shot and not Monica Meadows. But I would say one good thing might be the light. on the at the 5k mark <laughs> sorry man no, you're good. super sorry to bug you guys no. is this the end of the trail it's like Good question hold on I'll tell you I couldn't tell you end of the trail is the end of the trail here or does it like well, well there's it, like it, scrambles everywhere. It but can go higher. Does it get better than this though? Like in this whole like situation here? Um, well you could scramble like to the top of um I do not want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no. this is like the end of like Jumbo Pass. Okay. Um because if you go back to that side, that's like the other trailhead up to Jumbo. So this is like the kind of the top of the pass part. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Wow. All right, this is it. This is the end of uh, 
the Jumbo Pass hike. And I saw some guys who are staying in the cabin up here. They told me this little side trail to take a look at this glacier. And uh, awesome. All right, so that took me two hours to get up here. It's not too bad. Look at this. So I left uh, Mount Buchanan and uh, it's pretty easy drive down and uh, went to Caslow, refueled, got a couple things. Um, there's this like grocery store right on the main street in, I guess, downtown Caslow. And uh, it was just so reasonable. I bought a sandwich, <clears throat> a couple other things, and it equaled like $20, which was kind of unheard of. Um, anyway, um, had to do a couple work calls in Caslow, which was my last line of service. When I first drove up here, I did Jumbo Pass, and uh, that was a hike that probably should have took more time. I kind of like huffed it to the top and uh, basically ran down uh, the hike, and uh, oh, it took a lot out of me for sure. So feeling it right now. So I left Jumbo Pass Trailhead and I drove up to Monica Meadows Trailhead and that's where I am right now. <clears throat> and that's uh, obviously the trailhead of Monica Meadows and uh, that's the hike tomorrow. And I've heard really, really good things about that. But uh, oh, I just can't believe how spent I am on the last... A uh, few days. It's just time to go to bed. Wow.
good morning. And uh, this is it. I'm at the top and the end of the Monica Meadows Trail uh, in the Purcells. And uh, <laughs> feeling a lot more alive after I made that last part of that video uh, in the camper. I just basically passed out. I was just dead, dead tired. Uh, so uh, I was up early and uh, did this hike. It was relatively easy and I liked it way better than Jumbo uh, Pass. Uh, which I did yesterday. And I think the beauty about this one is you do all your switchbacks. There's seven switchbacks. Pretty crazy to get up high fast. And uh, you can kind of count them down so you kind of know where you're at. And then you open up to this just beautiful meadow and there's like streaming brooks and it's just like the flowers are blooming. And it was just perfect. Uh, not overly strenuous at all. Like, I don't know exactly what... I started my watch late because I had to go back and get a whole bunch of stuff from the, the truck. So it was a little bit chaotic start, but I was like, oh, should I get up, make breakfast and get coffee going? And I was like, no, let's just do this hike and then come down and uh, do that kind of stuff. So I was almost going to do three hikes out here, but I'm going to bail on uh, Macbeth's Ice uh, or Macbeth Glacier hike or something like that, which is the third hike in the area, which makes this area like... When you come here, it's kind of worth worth it to do the three, but uh, I need a day of rest before meeting up with my brother-in-law and we're gonna do um, Old Glory in Rosalind, which I'm pretty excited about, but that one will be the biggest one um, yet. So to do another strenuous hike, which I think Macbeth is the most strenuous of the three, I figured it's good to just bail on that one. I still have the whole camper set up in the in the parking lot downstairs or in the parking lot at the trailhead and uh, I'll probably go down there make some food pack up and uh, head back down and, and maybe find one more night to to camp out with a, a lake or something that I can just do, go for a swim so it's been uh, it's been dirty the last few uh, the few days so this is my I left Monday Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So this is my fourth day on the road. And um, yeah, I could use a lake or some kind of water source for sure. What I think is cool about this is that it's not a national park. It's not a provincial park. It's not a park of any kind. It's like a, it's a provincial rec site, I think. Not exactly sure what it's classified as, but basically you can fly a drone. There's so many things you can do here that you can't do. Um, in a park, so that's pretty cool. Even in the trailhead is like a, I could camp there for 14 days if I wanted to, but I will not. But that's it, this is one of those trips where I was like feeling pretty burnt out with, with work, it's been real busy. And I've been, you know, you're just kind of going nonstop and I started about three weeks ago trying to block off this week so I could kind of come out here and I knew that Natel and Madden were coming out on Saturday to visit some family out in Fruitvale and Trail and I thought okay well I'll just start a little bit earlier and uh, meet up with them on Saturday. All right, I'm gonna put this camera away. I'm gonna enjoy the hike down and uh, I'm sure I'll see you at the truck. And now the rest of the day is, uh, I'm just not sure. I didn't really think this one through completely. I think I'm gonna reorg the uh, trailer to kind of get that set up and then maybe find a spot where I can find a campsite that just has a lake or some kind of body of water in which I can go into. And uh, <laughs> right, I found that water source, Cooney Lake, and it was a refreshing dip and much needed after uh, a few <laughs> a few days on the road. Hey, uh, good morning. Um, it is day five of being on the road. And so basically after my hike at Monica Meadows, I uh, had something to eat and uh, kind of hydrated up there. And then I 
drove down south towards Caslow and then back to Nelson and things like that. And so now I'm at Kokanee Creek Provincial Park where I pulled in here yesterday and I thought it was a great spot to, one, have access to a great lake, um, showers, real bathrooms and uh, garbage and everything like that to just reorganize and uh, get reset for the next chapter of this trip. So basically next up is heading into trail where we're gonna stay with some family and uh, a couple of Intel's brother-in-laws possibly are gonna do the uh, hike to Old Glory in Roslyn with me on Saturday morning. Uh, Natel and Madden, my wife and son, are coming out to meet us uh, tomorrow, but they can't leave till tomorrow morning. Um, but we'll be hiking and hopefully down by the time they get there. And uh, that's about it. So it's a pretty mellow day today. I'm gonna kind of regroup. I haven't really had a lot of cell access. I had a little bit of uh, service out here to do some texts and stuff, but I'm gonna go into Nelson and uh, just regroup a little bit and then head over to uh, my mother-in-law's. All right, I had to take the uh, opportunity to get into Kootenai Lake one last time. And uh, this is the time of year, it's just a pleasure for it to be that cold. But uh, that's gonna end my time in Nelson and- You guys ready? I'm ready, are you ready, Darren? Ready, hold on, there's no sign that says where we're going here. Hey. Yes. Let's go. What? But That's where we need to go. But we still need to do that. <laughs> New recording. Home stretch. Almost there. Right there. Woo! Right? Yeah, it's awesome. or something here. Yep. Yeah. Look! We need a shopping list. Eight cans of peas. Hey! Here we are, we're at the top of Old Glory. Fucking it's, right. It's the weather station behind us. Firewatch. Is it? Yeah. Firewatch and weather station? Both. Anyway, this has been a fantastic way to start the day. Beautiful hike. And uh, aside from meeting these two strangers on the trailhead, it's been pretty fun. We're sleeping all over. <laughs> Tell uh, people a little bit about your experience hiking up to Old Glory. What to expect, what to bring, what do you think? Uh, water, food, um, provisions for overnight, and uh, two good friends. He's out now. All right, I'm skipping way ahead to the end of this trip, and uh, it's been a week. I think exactly seven days. When that hike was done, uh, the timing worked out great. Natel and Madden pulled in uh, to Natel's mom's place and uh, we just hung out. We have 
a lot of family in Trail and Fruitvale area. And yeah, so on Saturday we just uh, got together with with uh, family and then just hung out and it was fun. Um, played some pickleball, ate some carbs, we went to the Colander and Trail. And if you know, you know. Um, yeah, it was just kind of great to see. It's great to see everyone again and be in that area of the world where um, we did live there for about a year, many, many years ago, 17 years ago, maybe. Well, that's it. And uh, thanks for watching.